Earlier this month, Porsche showcased the latest racing and consumer hybrid technologies to the officials of the U.S. Department of Energy. PCA joined the crowd of federal employees and automotive journalists at the afternoon press event and caught up with Porsche factory driver and PCA member Patrick Long as well as Scott Atherton, CEO of the American Le Mans series. Okay, we're here at the Department of Energy in Washington, D.C., where Porsche debuted their GT3R hybrid race car to the public and to the, uh, to the government. Uh, it was a huge success. We're here with Patrick Long, factory driver, who's also going to be driving this GT3R hybrid. The names are going to change when this uh, arrives in China, uh, but before that, you're going to be at the Petit Le Mans. So, uh, first things first, why don't you tell us a little bit about the car and, uh, and why you're so excited about driving this? Well, I mean, uh, first of all, this is all about future technology, um, efficiency, but what we wanted to do was display that it's not only about going longer on a tank of fuel, making less environmental impact, but also being fast, being exciting, being new. Um, technologically speaking, we're braking later, we have 180 more horsepower of acceleration, um, and, and then you get into the advances of storing it in a flywheel rather than a battery. So all in all, it's, it's really exciting, it's a great project, it's something that's really groundbreaking. Uh, it's along the lines of what the American Le Mans series has been doing for the last decade, which is trying to lead that scope of green racing, uh, alternative energies, alternative fuels, and I think that the first hybrid GT car to debut in 11 days from now at the Petit Le Mans is, is what this excitement's about, and I think that the public and the government are excited that Porsche is taking all their resources, all their funding, and putting it into the future of not only the road cars with uh, the Cayenne and, and the upcoming Panamera hybrid, the 918, but also a race car example. So it's certainly exciting for me to be involved. Uh, very strategic from the driver's side, different to drive. Uh, you have to think about when to use the stored energy. Uh, so with that, uh, it's an equalizer, and I think I'm kind of old school. I love uh, you know normal braking applications, uh, no electronics, H pattern. This has a lot of electronics, a lot of aids, but it does have that paddle where you need to use the boost, and that brings it back to that old school feeling and where the driver makes a bigger impact than uh, normal, so I'm really excited to be driving this car. I know you earlier in your presentation you described about uh, almost 200 horsepower of boost to the front wheels, and you, and you stressed uh, that you, you chose to hit the button on the straight line. Have you tried it in the turn yet? I have tried it in the turn. Uh, we were testing at the Lausitz ring a few months ago, and uh, the first time I grabbed it in a high-speed corner, I thought going to active all-wheel drive where we're producing the, the energy through the front wheels, well, certainly it's going to help me turn, but I didn't take into account that I needed a little bit more racetrack on the exit than normal, and so I had a little bit of an agriculture off-track experience, and all the engineers laughed at me like, you dummy, if you're on the line and you're at the limit, and then you go and add another 180 horsepower, what do you think was going to happen? And I was shrugging my shoulders, I don't know. I figured if we go to active all-wheel drive and the front's pulling me through the corner, it's going to help, but no, uh, it very linear, uh, it measures even steering wheel lock. Um, it measures wheel slip from the rear axle. Uh, the hybrid management system is like an ECU for the hybrid. It's conversing with the ECU, so very, very deep on the software side. This comes from the Kerr system of Williams Formula One. So uh, a lot of technology, great testament to Porsche to pull it out so uh, early uh, in the development. And we're really doing this as a rolling test lab. And uh, with that, you know, we had a little bit of tough luck at the end of the Nürburgring 24 hours, but we're back to show it off to the American market. Now, fast forward to uh, Petit Le Mans. 11 days, you're driving your RSR for the Flying Lizards, leading the championship points. I believe Porsche is one point behind uh, for the manufacturer, within one point. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of pressure. Uh, what's your strategy going in? Well, it's to run for wins like we have done all year. Um, the competition has been so tremendously tight between BMW, Corvette, Ferrari, and ourselves that uh, you can't points race. You can't go out there and try to stay out of trouble or, or you know, manipulate the race. You just got to go out and run for wins, and that's worked out for us this year. We didn't come in as the favorites. Uh, we don't have as new of uh, development technology on our RSR as some of the other platforms and manufacturers, but we've won it through uh, smart racing, uh, great pit stops and strategy from the Flying Lizards, and uh, the reliability that Porsche has always given us. So we need to go into this 10-hour race and get to 70% to win the Drivers' Championship. That's always the, the big trophy you want on the mantle, but we want to win manufacturers and, and team championships as well. So we're going to run all the way. Uh, we think the longer the race, the better for us is Flying Lizard and Porsche, so we're confident. And uh, again, it's just about getting in and doing the job that we do every day, which is to drive the car as hard as possible. Now, you're a PCA member. We've got a lot of PCA members coming. A lot of PCA members read your blog, and uh, we thank you for it. 
for the people who are going to be coming to Petit Le Mans, as a driver, what do you recommend the best spots to watch the race? Where's the most action going to be? Oh, I love to move around. I think that's the great part of uh, road racing is that you can move around to different vibes of, of the campers and the wild partying, but also see different parts of the racetrack inside and outside. Um, I love being on the outside up at the hill of 10A and 10B. I think you see the cars come down into you know the, the hardest brake zone on the track and a lot of overtaking, see them go up over the hill in turn 11. Um, you have to see turn 12. It's just one of the most manic and quick corners on our whole circuit in North America. Um, you know, I love every section of Road Atlanta. It's sweeping, it's fast, it's dangerous. Um, it really uh, tests you and, and the race car, and I think that we're looking pretty good. Um, you know, for the people that, that haven't been to an American Le Mans series, uh, the biggest value I think there is is accessibility. Uh, if you go to a Formula One race or a NASCAR race, you're locked pretty far outside of the pits. You don't get up and close uh, with the cars or the drivers, and that's one thing that this, this series is really great, is letting you on the track, on the front straightaway. Uh, if you're going to be there, be there uh, about an hour before the race starts and be down on the front straightaway with general admission, rubbing elbows with uh, a lot of my heroes and uh, some of the race cars and, and people that you've only seen on TV. Well, there you have it. The inside look of what uh, we're going to anticipate at the Petit Le Mans. Uh, one last question, Patrick. This is personal. When you're sitting on the grid with the helmet on, do you ever say to yourself, I've got the best job in the world? Oh, I often remind myself of that daily. Um, and it, it is about racing. It is about that quest for a win. But I think I have the best job uh, in motorsport uh, being with Porsche. And I don't, I don't mean that in any insincere way. Um, I believe in the product. I enjoy the people and the demographic of the owners, uh, the club members, uh, the club racers. And, and that's what I live for. And, you know, when they stop paying me to race cars, you'll see me spending my money out on the club race weekends and uh, probably find me in an 80s air-cooled uh, spec 911 type E-Class. I, I love driving those cars. Uh, no power steering, no power assist brakes. Um, but I love the new product as well. I mean, it's, it's great to get a GT3 uh, road car out on the track and just be blown away by how I showed up in this car to the racetrack and how I was able to just pound it into the ground all day long and not have any brake fade, tire fade, or anything like that. So it's a great brand to work for and uh, great people to be involved with. There you go. Come out to Petit and cheer on Patrick, a fellow PCA member. We're here with Scott Atherton from the ALMS series, CEO. Uh, he's uh, very excited because in uh, about 11 days we're going to the Petit Le Mans, the finale, and it's going to be an exciting one. Uh, tell us what we have to look forward to, Scott. How much time we got? Because there is so much going on at Petit Le Mans this year, it, it, it's hard to literally figure where to, where to begin. You've got all four championships still alive, so in the GT category, which has been just insanely competitive all season long, it could come down to uh, the Porsches or the BMWs as to who's going to take the honors. Uh, and the same applies in all the other classes. You've got this incredible Porsche GT3 R hybrid making its North American competitive debut. Bleeding edge technology that here we are in front of the Department of Energy with the EPA officials with us and showcasing what is the future of high performance technology. Uh, you're going to have the largest field in, in total that we've had since 2002. We've got 46 cars entered for this race both the Audis, both the Peugeots, a full lineup of prototypes, the same world-class GT field that we've had all season that has generated incredible competition. Mostly our qualifying is separated by tenths of a second. The races are decided on the last lap. And here, as I said, it comes down to the final race of the year to decide the championship. On top of that, you can add in all of the extra curricular activities. There's going to be a record-setting display area, vendor expo, the Porsche plots, which for Porsche Club members, you literally have 50-yard line seats and 50-yard line parking. It doesn't get any better. Uh, with all the rain we had at last year's race, you can guarantee we're going to have a day just like today, beautiful, sunny, and warm. Um, if you're a racing enthusiast, if you're an automotive enthusiast, and especially if you're a Porsche enthusiast, it will be the center of the universe on October 2nd. Now with regards to the, uh, to the hybrid, what have they done rules-wise for this race to include this car? Uh, I don't think it's running for actually points, is it? This car is going to be competing as a GT car. So on the timing and scoring sheets, you'll see the car calculated and, uh, and scored as if it's it right in there with all the other GTs. At the end of the race, the official rules will show this car as being technically unclassified. And the simple fact behind that is there are no current rules and regulations that allow this car to compete. But what the purpose is behind having the car out there at Petit Le Mans is not only for 
Porsche to gather a lot of data, but equally so for the rules makers. So the IMSA officials, the ACO officials that craft the rules and regulations, rather than working off of assumptions and hypothetical simulations, we will be able to wire this car up and gather a tremendous amount of data that will enable the rules makers to write the rules and regulations for the future that ultimately will provide this car a venue to compete. But um, we're looking forward to having it out there, mixing it up with the GT cars. Uh, it'll be under strict rules not to affect the outcome of anybody else's race, but you know, race car drivers have two speeds, you know, stop and go. So uh, it should be interesting regardless. There you have it, it's going to be an exciting weekend. If you don't have your tickets, go out and buy them. There's plenty still left, plenty of space still left in the Porsche plots. Once in a lifetime, we're going to see the hybrid run in Atlanta.